Hey, how's it going? So this is going to be a quick video on showing some different admin solutions. Um, often when you're doing a project, admin is quite a common part and um, there are a few tools that can help make your life a lot easier. Some of the tools we're going to cover in this video include Forest Admin, React Admin, Retool and even Airtable, which can be used for admin. I'm sure there are a lot more options out there. Um, my background is as a full stack developer, React, Node.js, TypeScript, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, well, I worked for a freelancer as a few years and these tools can often be very helpful to sort of get your admin side of things done very quickly. Often the client or you, you don't care that much about how your admin looks. So it just sort of needs to do the job. And there are a bunch of out the box tools that can do that very quickly for you. So we're gonna start with the first one. This is Forest Admin. Um, I might even go to the site for it. Just go show the homepage. You can watch their video as well, it should be quite quick. So yeah, it's an out of the box admin solution. This is what it looks like. Um, this is a quick demo we set up and we're even gonna set up a new one. So yeah, we're gonna set up a new one. Um, over here, I have a really simple Nest.js project that I built. Um, it's the standard Nest.js and then I created two resources, posts and comments all out the box. Um, I guess what's most interesting here is the entity. So uh, we have the post entity, They're very simple. We're using type form here and um, we have comments, uh, username, text, and an ID. And similarly, we will have the same thing over here for the comments. Uh, the structure of this project isn't that important, but I'll post it afterwards. And in a second, we're gonna add forest admin to this project. So um, yeah, if we wanna just take a look sort of what are the APIs returning right now, so running this locally and it's just returning this as a single post. Now, if you want um, to set up an admin solution, so we're gonna do that in five minutes in, this, in um, Forest Admin. So create your project. This works with any existing database. Our database type is Postgres in this case. Our username is Postgres, um, password is and we call this admin demo, I believe. Let's see. Uh, we're going to install with NPM. You can also use Docker. So this stage I've already done. Uh, let's copy this into our VS code. And this is going to go and install the project for us. And See how this comes out. This is the folder over here on the left. It's building. You can see it's a full Node.js project. And yeah, so it's completed now. If we want to go and run it, so what are the final steps? We need to do an npm start now. So this will run the admin project for us. And it should be running on this port, 3310. And if we go to Forest Admin, it, yeah. So how easy was that? Yeah, it was very easy. Well done, Forest Admin. Now we have a full admin panel working for us. So how Forest Admin works is they host the front end and the back end code belongs to you, but they fully generated it for you. So like for security, that's pretty good. Uh, they don't touch your data at all, apart from on the front end. So over here, we can see our comments, our posts, these or our posts already that are straight out of the box. Everything's working for us. We don't actually have any comments. So let's go add one, add it to a post that we have in the database. This is a new comment. And obviously in a real project, it wouldn't really look like this. And there we have it. We have our first comment, our posts, uh, the relations that we'll set up. So if I go to this post, I can find the different comments. Um, yeah, and that is Forest Admin setup. That was super quick. You can also do a bunch of stuff over here on the back end for the project. Um, so let's say we don't want to see the ID for every column. We could hide these. If we want to re re rearrange things, we could do that. Uh, you can do all sorts of things over here. Uh, this is actually completely free. Everything I've done right now, this is all running locally. If you want to deploy it to production, we'll go here. I found the easiest way, just put it on a free Heroku instance. That will work definitely while starting out. If you want to upgrade, if the client cares, 
um, then you can put it on a more performance server. But since it's just admin, only one or two users will ever be on it most of the time. So a free Heroku instance is actually going to work fine for this. Um, and yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do and play around with it. You can, um, we'll take a look at the code a bit, but this is, for example, uh, the comment code. If you want, you can add special actions. So for example, right now in Forest Admin, if we want, we can do an action where we uh, delete or duplicate all these items. I could click here and delete that, um, that comment. If you want to add more special actions, you can do so here. You can do stuff with field segments. Sort of if you want all the posts that are from the last month, you could put a segment here to do that. Same for posts. Um, in terms of the models, you'll notice uh, it uses SQLite. So this code base is fully generated for you. You can go use it. Um, when you make changes, to your, it generates it from the database. So I'm actually using Typeform in the Nest.js project. But over here, you can see it's generated everything. It looks at the database structure and then does it all for you. So for example, the text is a, a string. It can't be null and so on. These are all the fields. Um, as you continue on the project, you're actually going to have to update this manually. Forest Admin used to have an option where it sort of did it automatically, but they removed that option. Sometimes what I do when I'm starting a project, I'm using Forest Admin instead of updating manually, I'll actually just delete the entire project. And then I will go and uh, sort of generate it again from scratch like we did just did now. Uh, it's pretty quick, so it's not such a problem. Here you can see associations, relationships. And yeah, this is a project. This is a very typical um, Node.js project using Express. You can uh, put more routes over here, which you'll do if you want to add custom functionality and so on. And I will post, a, I will upload this to GitHub and you can take a look yourself as well what came out. There are a few things to take note of here. If you really want to go and add custom functionality, then what you should do is, um, it, that, so Forest does add that option, but you're going to have to start writing custom code. Um, and that code is actually in Ember. I think they're working on a React solution. Um, but yeah, right now it's it's not the most fun. You have to do it in the editor. They don't use like Monaco or anything for the editor. Uh, so it's going to be a bit annoying over here. You can see you can add charts. Some of these features might be sort of paid for, um, but you can add all sorts of admin charts that you want over here as well. If you need something for like full editing, like full customization, this will get you going very quickly, but I'm not sure I'd actually recommend it long term. Um, just editing things, having to add custom Ember code within the browser, things like that. Added, editing your backend isn't the biggest deal. Your backend might already look quite similar to what Forest Admin produces for you. So that's nice. Um, but yeah, doing like sort of full on custom components can be a bit annoying. I'm just going to show you to sort of a more full example of what we can do with Forest Admin. Yes, we should go to the Forest Admin homepage again. Um, Yeah, you can check the video here. Where's their demo project? Yeah, they used to have a link to this demo project, I guess. Um, you're going to have to search for yourself. Okay, they don't have it here anymore, but if sort of if you watch this video, you can see in this video, you have all sorts of things going on. Um, and yeah, that is, so that is Forest Admin. We're going to look at a few more solutions. So as I mentioned, React Admin, that's another one we can use. React Admin, if you want to get started, will be something like this. And over here, we can actually show a demo for React Admin. So this, again, it will often sort of be fully generated right out of the box. You'll write like one command or so. It can work off a REST API, Graph GraphQL API. From what I saw last time, we used it a year ago or so. With GraphQL, it doesn't work amazingly, but it might have improved since then. Um, yeah, anyway, like, again, it's an admin solution. What You can expect a whole bunch of stuff here. A lot of this stuff, they will sort of have custom built over here, but the basic views, like these tables and everything, they will exist on any React admin project. Another tool that's worth using um, is Retool. So over here, I'm going to sort of, this is a Retool admin. Um, you can say I just pulled in a table, and you can imagine you'd connect this to your database. Um, can add text here, and basically you can custom, you can fully custom build your own admin here. Again, all this UI is hosted by Retool itself, and you can do a whole bunch of things. Um, sort of, you can add filters over here. You can preview it. You can have production staging if you're on their paid plan, and this is also a very nice tool to sort of really quickly build up a project. And the last one I'm actually going to mention is Airtable. I wouldn't usually recommend it. Recommend this if you're not familiar with Airtable. Airtable is sort of like Google Sheets. Um, what 
yeah, so it's just a spreadsheet basically. So I can add information here, but it's sort of a little prettier. One of the nice features it has is relationships. You can have multiple tables and then let's say someone made a purchase, Howard made a purchase. You can go select something here. So he made a 30, bought a 30 inch monitor. You could be to do whatever status you want, different features. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with Airtable. It's a cool tool. Um, so what you can actually do is the Airtable API is actually really nice as well. But yeah, this has an API. And if you want, what we've actually done for some projects is we take data um, and we actually, from our app, we move it into the Airtable. I wouldn't recommend sort of having duplicate information of two different tables, but if there's sort of information you don't yet want to have in your database, you might just want to keep notes for yourself. It's much easier sort of to add any field you want here rather than adding a field to Postgres. Um, so if I just want to add a new field, like, I don't know, I have someone's phone number um, and well, I don't know, let's say currency, um, so I can sort of put this and well, let's say this would be a price and amount. So I can do this here. If I had to do this in Postgres, it's not the end of the world or MongoDB, it takes a bit longer. So if, if you have to write quick notes, sometimes getting your project to Airtable can be cool. Um, over here is a demo project. I'll update it a bit more in a second with sort of what we just added now in Forest Admin. And yeah, that is it overall. Um, obviously the last option I'm actually gonna put here is custom solution. So you could fully build this out yourself um, I just see a lot of freelance developers, a lot of developers in general, they waste a lot of time on this stuff. It doesn't necessarily add a lot of business value by doing it yourself. If you really need something custom, if you need it to be user facing, so users without, outside your organization, it could be useful there. But otherwise, these are the solutions I'd look at. So these can be working within a hackathon. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely recommend checking out some of these solutions. I'll save you a lot of time and I'd ha be happy to hear any comments below.